right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. And this is episode eight. Yes, it's been eight episodes. December the 3rd seems almost like a distant memory, but nevertheless, we are so excited. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in to another great episode of my show. All right, so as usual, we begin with the recap. So on last week, I went over social media. And again, as I know, most people do not like social media. And even despite its growth, people still feel like it's not a necessity for your organization. Hopefully, I dispelled that myth on last week because you do need social media because social media is not only free, but it can help you reach markets you normally would not reach on your own. So the four ones that I went over, of course, is Facebook. So really quickly, Facebook is your social aspect. You can reach your family, your friends. Uh, it's also good for business as well, but Facebook is really important because when it comes to videos, you can do your video for up to two or three hours. So you can record your church service, you can record your Bible studies, you can record your outings on Facebook. Next is Twitter. Twitter is a, a more of a company tool, I would say, because you can actually address a company and get a response right then. And I think last week I used the example of I took a picture of my little cousin and I was dressed in express clothes and I said, I think I would be cute as an express model or something to that extent. Express responded immediately and it was like, we think you actually would. I think they drew a wink and they said, why don't you contact our sponsorship department? So Twitter is really good for companies that you really want to reach directly without having to go through all the red tape. Next is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is your professional Facebook. It's typically what I say. It's your professional Facebook. Now, let me address this for ministries and churches. Yes, even if you are a pastor, you still are in charge of an organization. So LinkedIn is good for you as well because at some point, you're going to want your organization to do partnerships. And those partnerships will be probably with companies, for-profit companies, that you want to either sponsor you or actually work with you. So yes, you have a reason to use LinkedIn well. I'm stressing that because I hear that all the time. Churches go, well, I don't need, or pastors will say, well, I don't need a LinkedIn because, you know, I have my ministry and so on and so forth. Yes, but your ministry is going to want to work with people. And in order to do that, you're going to have to make connections. LinkedIn is the easiest way to make professional connections with the people you're trying to reach. And another example of that really quickly is I was looking for a, uh, some executives in a particular company. So I went to the search box, typed in the name of the company, and it gives you everybody that's listed or affiliated with that company on LinkedIn. Easy way to get to who you need to get to. Lastly, Instagram. Instagram is like the picture Facebook. So it's good for your uh, flyers that you're using for your conferences that are coming up or if you have a flyer that you use to promote the church. Instagram is a good place to put that. Also on Instagram, you can do videos, but your videos cannot be any longer typically than a minute. And I think I'm being generous, but I think it's typically a minute. Anything over that, they're going to make you crop. So you definitely want to use that. Now on a side note, there are plenty of apps you can use to make a good video. I personally use InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. And it's like a little red box and has a little white thing on the inside of it. And InShot is really for me, I would say it's for beginners because it's not overly complicated but it's not uh, undercomplicated. It's a good way to start editing and making little videos for promotional marketing materials for your social media. So again, that's InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T, is a good one to use. Uh, Power Editor is good, but you probably want to have a little more understanding because I tried it and it just didn't work well for me. But um, I have a basic understanding of how to use these apps. But definitely InShot to edit those videos or make a video for promotional uh, ideologies. So there you have it. Those are your four uh, social media things. You have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So that's our good recap. So to start off this particular episode, I really want to get into the name of your organization because people will go, well, what's so important about a name? Your name means everything. So you want to make sure that when you create the name of your organization that you have the following things in mind. Number one, come up with a business name that is meaningful to you. Use that sparingly because just because I have a love for whales doesn't mean I want to name my organization lovewhales.com or love whales today. That's not a very attractive name. So you want to make sure it's meaningful, but make sure it has some taste and some class to it as well. So a classier name would maybe be something along the lines of uh, uh, whale beautification, the whale beautification project, 
sounds a lot more appealing than I love whales. So you want to make sure you keep those things in mind. Just because it's meaningful, it should still be tasteful and still be something that you want to see at the top of a letterhead or at the top of a website because that's actually where we're going after we're done with this. We're going to get into what should be on your website. So again, make sure that it's meaningful to you but have taste and a little class to it. Next, if you're having trouble, consider a title that in some way describes your product or is based off your own name. Uh, case in point with the leadership blend. I chose the leadership blend, and most people don't know this, so this is actually top secret information that I'm giving you guys. Uh, I chose leadership, of course, because that's my area, but then blend is an acronym. So blend stands for business law, entertain, uh, business law education, nonprofit, decoded, because those are my four areas that I enjoy. I enjoy business, I enjoy law, I enjoy education or entertainment, depending on the arena, but more so education. And I definitely love nonprofits, so I, I had to find something to do with the D. So decode it. So when I say that, it means I'm decoding all these different areas and getting more information for you guys to be better in these four areas. So that was why I created the name for my organization. But again, you want to make sure that it describes your product. So my brand is leadership. So in the title, there had to, the title had to have contained leadership. So the leadership blend, and again, the blend is an acronym. Lastly, make sure that it's something that people will remember without being too confusing or difficult to pronounce. A five-year-old can pronounce leadership blend. So I want to make sure it was that simplistic. But when you say leadership blend, people automatically go, what is blend? Why did you use blend? And usually that's when I get into the acronym, what blend stands for. So again, make sure that it's meaningful to you, but has some class and sophistication to it. Make sure it describes your product. And remember, hope, make sure that it's not confusing or that it's difficult to pronounce. Because again, it's going to segue us to where we're going next, which is to your website. Yes, I have a ministry. Why do I need a website is the question I usually get. And even with having a website for your church or your organization, remember that there are certain things that should definitely be on your website. And honestly, there are certain things that probably should not be on your website. So let me start with this. For a ministry or a church, your website should not be full of all the clips of you preaching. That is not the purpose of your church website. Your church website should be an uh, encompassment of your whole organization to show the different facets as to what you do. So you definitely want to make sure, and this goes for a for-profit institution as well. Even with a for-profit, it shouldn't be all about your activities in the field. You want to give people a sense of what you do and who you are. That is the purpose of a website. Also, to be able to send people to a place where they can get more information about what your organization does, be it for-profit or a non-for-profit. So first, and everything we do comes back to this one word, mission statement. I cannot stress this enough. This is why it would behoove any individual to sit down and actually come up with a good mission statement that you should not have to revisit for at least three to five years. So with your mission statement, you definitely want to put that on your website because usually when people are looking to invest in a nonprofit, and I'll use nonprofit to start off with, when they're looking for a nonprofit to invest in, they look for your mission statement. Why? Because in your mission statement, which should be less than a paragraph and probably no more than one or two sentences, you're going to encompass what your organization does. So when, let's say, GE is looking for a nonprofit to do their social responsibility, they go through mission statements to see, hey, so they have a meeting and they decide, you know what, for our social responsibility, we want to invest in an, or a nonprofit that saves the whales. I don't know what it is about whales today. I'm just going to stay in that vein. So we want to invest in an organization or give to a nonprofit that saves the whales or works with whales. So let's say that your mission statement says, uh, savingwhales.com, our mission is to make sure there's money there to uh, further the development and pres preservation of whales. So they're going through, they see the name of your organization, they go to your website to look up your mission statement, and they see that mission statement. So then they go back to their meeting and say, you know what, I found a nonprofit, this is their mission statement, they work with whales, I think we should give to them. And that was just an example off the top of my head. So you definitely want to make sure that your mission statement is on your website. Now the most important part of your website is your home page. On your home page is where you put all your pertinent information. Because typically what people will do when they type in your, the name of your website and they search it, your home page comes up first. And that's usually the only place you're going to get their attention because most of them are not going to surf your page that fast. They're going to scroll down to your home page and try to get all the main points on your page. So definitely want to make sure that all your important stuff is on your web page. All right, so 
Mission statement should be there. Now, your mission statement doesn't necessarily have to be on the home page, but you can create a uh, page at the top that says mission statement. They click on it, mission statement is there, they don't have to worry about it. Now, if you're really good, you'll put your mission statement and your vision statement on one page. Because remember, your vision statement tells your long-term goal or the vision for your organization. All right? So also on your home page, you definitely want to have footage and pictures of what you do. Now, again, I'm going to stay in the church vein. So this is where you're probably going to put one or two clips, one or two really good clips if you really want to further your preaching or you're trying to get engagements or things of that magnitude. This is where you will put footage or pictures of you preaching or being out in the field. But again, make sure that you use good footage. And it's kind of funny because now you can actually use your cell phone to, use, to have good footage. But if you're prevy enough to have a media department, then it's probably better that you let them edit and come up with really good footage to put on your home page. Because again, a first impression is a lasting impression. And sometimes you only get one shot to get followers or to get parishioners to join your organization. So we definitely want to keep that in mind. We're talking about the website and your actual home page. So let's do a quick recap. Mission statement. So you definitely want to make sure that your mission statement is on your website somewhere. I wouldn't necessarily say put it on your home page, but make sure it's at least one of your pages. And like I said, if you're really good, then you put your mission statement and your vision statement probably as one of your actual pages on the actual website itself. Now, when it comes to your home page, again, remember, your home page is the main page that people are going to look at when they click on your website or type in your website's name. So you want to make sure that all your pertinent information is on your home page. This is the biggest mistake that I see most people make because they put all the important information scattered throughout the website. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that all the pertinent information is on your home page and then you create the pages accordingly. So case in point, your mission statement again can be a page. Your footage and your pictures, you can use some of it to grab people's attention on your home page, but then you also want to create another page that people can go look at to actually see the footage and the pictures that you put up on your website. So case in point, with the Leadership Blends website on my home page, you get all the good stuff. Uh, I usually change out every week's episodes. So you have the TV show episode as well as the radio show episode on the home page. Uh, you have the schedule for the guests that are going to be on the radio show on the home page. Why? Because when people come click on my page, I want them to be able to see what's on that page and see what I'm actually doing. But there's another page that's been created that's called Watch and Listen, where you can actually watch the show or listen to it. So I have my um, YouTube channel at the top where you can click and watch that episode, which is the week preceding the one that's on the home page. So the current episode is always on the home page because that's the one you want to catch people's attention with first. Then you put the last week's episode on the Watch and Listen page. So on the Watch and Listen, last week's episode is at the top, and at the bottom, I have that week's SoundCloud uh, so people can listen to it. So that's how you want to do that. You put your more appealing stuff on the home page, but then create another page that people can get to really quickly to see what you're actually offering. All right? Flyers. For ministries or people that have a lot of events, you want to put your most current flyer on your home page so that when people go to your home page, they can say, oh, well, you know, the church is having a bazaar on the 23rd. So you want to make sure that's at the top of the home page so they'll know what you're doing as events. And you also want to create headings on your home page. So like on my actual home page, it says upcoming events, or it'll say the Leadership Blend TV weekly episode, or it'll say the Leadership Blend radio show current episode on the home page. So not only are you watching it, you're know, you know what you're watching. And it spends, a lot of us use YouTube. Anything that they can click to get to faster to your YouTube page, you want to do. So like with mine, with the Leadership Blend TV show, if they click it, it takes them straight to the YouTube page, or they can watch that particular episode right then and there. Same thing with the SoundCloud. If they click the SoundCloud episode, it takes them straight to SoundCloud. So not only are they seeing that particular episode, but they're seeing past episodes that they can watch as well. Because again, you're building a brand. And yes, that includes your church and that includes your ministry. It's also a brand. All right? Videos and commercials. Now, at one time, pictures were enough. People looked at pictures. They were excited. They were like, oh, my God, I want to get involved. That's not enough anymore. Now you have to create videos so that people can actually see in real time what you're doing because people have gotten really uh, creative with filters. 
So I think that's why you have to do a little bit more than pictures. So you want to show them in real time videos and stuff. Now, when it comes to videos and commercials and things of that magnitude, I'm going to say, especially for ministry purposes, they don't have to be perfect. But again, you want to make sure they have a little class of sophistication to them because you never know who's going to visit your website. And I cannot stress that enough. A lot of times we should be working with other businesses and corporations to help us fund our dream and also expand the vision. So you want to keep that in mind when you create your website. So yes, if you do not know how to create a website and you know somebody that does, you probably want to get the help. Now for those who do not know or are not tech prevy with uh, technology, you can use websites such as GoDaddy or uh, Squarespace is a new one. I personally use GoDaddy. I think it's very easy because it gives you already templates that you just choose and just fill in. So GoDaddy is probably the easiest. I will say, unless you really understand technology, I would be careful with Wix. Wix is good, but you can change every detail on Wix, literally, down to the smallest thing. So for me, it was a bit overwhelming, but for you, hey, you might actually try it and like it. But I will definitely say GoDaddy is one of the more simpler ones to use, and uh, WordPress apparently is one as well. But I personally use GoDaddy, so I can vouch that it is very easy to use. All right, so pages. There are two pages you definitely want to have on your website. One of them is about us. What is about us? Exactly what the name implies. About us pretty much tells everything that somebody would need to know to either want to get involved with your organization or learn more about your organization. So you definitely want to have an about us page that they can click on that has maybe one or two pictures and it usually talks about the leadership. So with my about us, it has all my information, my education, uh, what the show is about, all that good stuff under the About Us. So let's say for your ministry or your church, that's where you'll probably have the pastor, the associate pastor, uh, all their information will be on the About Us page. Everybody that deals with leadership in your organization should be on your About Us page because that's what people are going to be looking for. All right? The next one is Contact Us. The Contact Us page is a definite as well because this is how people will get in touch with you. So you want to make sure that you have the names of individuals, you have the email addresses of individuals, and you have the phone numbers of individuals, and make sure that it's specific to what they do. So case in point, my PR person. On my About Us page, it has their name and their information, their background, all that good stuff. And then on the Contact Us page, it says, this is the PR person, this is their email address, this is their phone number, so that people will know who to get in touch with for whatever their need may be. So you want to definitely make sure that you departmentalize what everybody does so that people will know who they're getting in touch with and what they do. All right? So those are the two definites that you definitely want to have on your website. So again, let's start from the beginning really quickly. So you have your home page, which is your most important page. You want to make sure on your home page that you have your, well, you don't have to have your mission statement on your home page, but you want to make sure that you have your footage. You want to have some pictures on your home page. You want to have some videos. You want to have some commercials on your home page. As far as pages go, make sure that you have an About Us page that has all the information about your organization, what you guys do. Uh, actually, that's a good place you can put your mission statement. If you want to create a separate page, you can put your mission statement on the About Us page as well. Actually, you probably won't start with that. So to say About Us, they'll click on it. Mission statement, then right beneath your mission statement, you'll have the leaders in your organization. So for ministry, it'll be the pastor, the associate pastor, the head of the trustee board, people that people would probably want to have to get in touch with for some specific purpose. Then you want to have your contact us page. This is where all the important people in your leadership, this is how people will get in touch with them to achieve the objective that they need to achieve, whether that be trying to build partnerships, whether that's community outreach, all that good stuff. So there you have how to build a proper website. episodes I've talked a lot about starting a business but I haven't really touched on if you already have a business so we're gonna slide over to those individuals who already have a business who are going okay well I've already done all of that but now my business is not as successful as I would like it to be so now I'm gonna segue into key performers how do you know if your ministry or your organization or your business is actually thriving outside of what you actually can physically see all right so we're gonna look at some key performers 
Now, the terminology may seem a little weird, but I assure you I'm going to make it work for every arena that's watching this telebroadcast, all right? So your first one, of course, is going to be your, your customers, your number of customers. So in the religious organizations or the churches or your nonprofits, your customers are still the people that come to your ministry. So your parishioners, uh, sometimes the volunteers. If these numbers start fluctuating or they're not really high, it's a little obvious. You might want to look at your tactics or you might want to look at the way that you're doing ministry. Now, of course, when we specifically talk about ministry, God gives the increase. Of course. But at the same token, you can look at that from the flip side. So if your retention is not good, meaning that your parishioners are constantly leaving or cycling out, there's still something to be said about that kind of effort that people are putting in to leave your ministry. So you still want to address the way you do things and address the way you run the ministry. Now, again, God gives the increase and all that's great, but he still expects us to run these as organizations. And in an organization, if your retention rate is not good, meaning the way you retain people into your organization, it's worth taking a look at or worth taking a think about the way you do things or the manner by which you do things. All right? Number two, your number growth rate. Are you seeing significant growth in your ministry or in your organization? Are your volunteers going up? Are the number of parishioners that come to your church going up? Kind of obvious, but at the same token, it's not kind of obvious because sometimes we don't pay attention to those kinds of things because, again, the ideology is God gives the increase, and that is absolutely right. But we're talking about running your organization as an organization, be it a for-profit or a non-profit, and rather it be either one of them, you still want to pay attention to your growth rate. So when you do your business plan or your marketing plan, and yes, you should have one for your ministry or your church, you want to make sure that you pay attention to these kinds of things. So if in year 2018 you had 150 parishioners and then you get to the end of 2018 and you were down to about 75, that's a significant loss. So you might want to look at it and have some conversations. And when I say look at, that means a plethora of different outlets. So have some conversations, especially if you had prominent leaders leave your church. Have some conversations with them. Hey, why did you leave the church? Was it, you know, what was the reason? Was it something that we did? Is it something we could change? Uh, volunteers, if you're having a lot of uh, outreach and your volunteers start to slack off, have some conversations. Hey, you know, you used to be a part of the outreach ministry. You're no longer doing it. And I see a five or six other people left with you. Was there a specific reason? Is it something we need to talk about? Or better yet, be proactive. If you start seeing these declines, and you're not seeing you know, anybody come to you and say, well, hey, this needs to change, this is why I'm leaving, then go to them. That's the part that we don't ever think about. When you see these significant changes in your organization or in your ministry, you start having conversations as the leader and get to the bottom of what's going on. Because typically people don't just leave an organization just to leave it. Usually there are other variables that are factored in that they may or may not want to talk about. But it's your job to make sure that you have those conversations. And I will warn you, sometimes those conversations are not comfortable, but they are necessary. All right? Next, your total. When, when we're talking about money. So even with the churches, yes, your tithes and your offerings, has that gone down? Uh, your outreach programs that you may charge for, for an actual nonprofit, have you seen a decline in that kind of money? Revenue, have you seen a decline in your revenue? Because definitely that's a key indicator that something might be going a little wrong. And even with a for-profit institution, if your profits have gone down, there's a reason for that. You definitely want to get to the bottom of it. All right? Expenses. Are you forking out a lot of money and not seeing a return or ROI, return on investment? Are you spending a lot more money in your expenditures and not seeing a return on your investment? That's worth taking a look into as well. Because oftentimes we put money into programs and services that are not bringing fruitful for our organizations and not bringing in that revenue. And a sidebar. In previous videos, I talked about your revenue and having to put that in your budget if you are considering going for a grant. This is where that factors in, because if you actually have a grant, they have accounted for your revenue that you put into your budget. So if that revenue amount starts going down, 5 out of 10, you're probably going to have to ask for more grant money, which may or may not work in your favor. So you definitely want to make sure you keep an eye on that, and that goes for for-profit, non-profits, all that good stuff. Customer ratings, yes. Your parishioners will probably have something to say about not just you preaching, but the people that are in charge of your leadership boards, your auxiliaries, uh, your trustees, your deacons, all that good stuff. They should have feedback as well. So you definitely want to have those kinds of conversations. So again, a recap. Customers, growth rate, total, I'll say total slash revenue, expenses, and customer ratings. All right. 
So that's been a full episode. So as usual, I'm going to give you all my information because I know, you know, yes, recovery gives all this great information. I would love to have them come talk to our organization. We can make that happen. All right, so this is all my information. On Facebook, Ricardo Ricky Rice for my personal page, which I do do a lot of stuff from, or you can go to the Leadership Blends pages. Next, LinkedIn. On my LinkedIn, you will find it under Ricardo D. Rice. Remember, whenever I say Rice, it's always with a W, so it's W-R-I-C-E. On Instagram, yes, I have an Instagram. I can't fuss about these things and don't have them. On Instagram, you have R.D. Rice. Again, R-D-W-R-I-C-E. Website, which is my main thing. You want to go to ricecommunity.com. That's Rice with a W. And on the website, you'll find all the information. It's actually the easiest place to go because when you go on the website, you can watch this week's television show. You can watch last week's. You can actually, actually watch the radio show. So that's also on there. The radio show. On Mondays and Fridays, I have a leadership talk show on IBNX Radio Network from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. You can hear it on TuneIn. You can hear it on Spotify. You can hear it on Apple Music. Hey, I'm everywhere. SoundCloud as well. And my book. Yes, I wrote a book. So I have a book called Calculated Conflict, which you can find on Amazon or actually Barnes & Nobles. I just found out that the book is actually available on Barnes & Nobles as well. So it's called Calculated Conflict, and it takes a look at how conflict can help your organization be a better organization. I know, it sounds like an oxymoron. But a lot of times we need the conflict to uncover the things that have been hidden. So you definitely want to purchase that book. So again, Facebook, Ricardo Ricky Rice. LinkedIn, Ricardo D. Rice. Instagram, R.D. Rice, website, ricecommunity.com. The radio show is every Monday and Friday from 12 to 2 p.m. on IBNX Radio Network. And the book can be purchased at Barnes & Nobles or Amazon, Calculated Conflict by yours truly, Ricardo D. Rice.